Welcome back to our series on bootstrapping. We left off the previous video after having made this plot where we uh, show the bootstrapping distribution compared to the actual data and the original sample means. What we primarily use bootstrapping for is to do statistical inference. We want a larger sample size so that we can feel more confident in our final statistical inference. And one of those things is performing confidence intervals. And so a confidence interval is generally going to be two numbers. We've got the mean plus or minus something times the standard error. And so depending on the confidence level, you can have different calculations. We're gonna focus on the 95% confidence interval as this is by far the most common confidence level that you will see um, in, you know, in practice as well as in this course. And so there are three steps to calculating the confidence interval with the bootstrap samples. The first is to actually calculate X bar. So what the average of the sample means is. And so it is critical to note that everything that we're doing with confidence intervals is on the bootstrapped sample distribution. So we're using boot means, which we um, calculated up here to show right here. And so essentially we want boot means, bootstrap sample means, dot mean. So the average of the sampling distribution. And so then we can print x bar is. So this is our mean that goes into these equations. The next step is to calculate the standard error. And recall from our previous video, we are working with the standard error because we're working with a sampling distribution. So we say SE is boot means, bootstrap sample means, dot STD. And then we can also print that. We can say SE is And so now we have the standard error. And so now we're ready. That's the only two things we need in order to calculate the confidence interval with the bootstrap distribution. And so we can create a, um, a array using square brackets where the first value is XB minus two times SB. And the second value is XB plus two times SE. And then we can print that. And we could just print, you know, CI similar to what we've been doing up here. But to show you a slightly different way to print things, still using the print button. Instead of just typing out the variable name here, I'm going to use a mini function. So I'm going to say round y to the third decimal place for all y in ci. And so similar to our for loops, this y is just a placeholder. It just needs to be this to match that. And then it'll figure out as the y's apply to our values in si or CI. So if we run that, we can see the 95% confidence interval is 5.058, 7.75. And so that is all you need to do in order to get the confidence interval. But if we wanted to visualize it, I'm actually going to come up here and take this plot from our previous video plot it here for reference. We want to add the 95% confidence interval to this. So 
we have a new geome. This is called error bar H for horizontal, AES. We give it a Y value, and this is just going to be the position on the Y axis based off of what numbers we see here. So I'm just going to do 0 0.5 um, to put it halfway. And then we need to give it the X min of our error bar. So this is the first value of CI, but attached to the zero width index. And then we do the same for X max here, CI one. And outside the AES, we can give it a color and say red. And then we're going to also add a point, a single point here. We're going to say same Y, but our X is going to actually be X bar. So that we sort of show where the sample the mean of the sampling distribution is in reference to our confidence interval. Again, outside the AES, we say color is red and we'll give it a sufficiently large size so that it stands out. So if we run this, we can see that now we've added this confidence interval to our plot and we've got our X bar here in the middle, which lines up with the middle of our normal distribution. And we can see here. And so with our confidence interval, essentially we're saying that we're 95% confident that the true mean lies within this interval. So this um, is how you can add the confidence interval to the plot after calculating it.